Well, it doesn't look like there's been a whole lot of traffic out here. We're up on Lake Winnebagosh and there should be a pretty good evening bite out on these mid lake humps and we're gonna chase some walleyes around. So stay right where you're at. It's gonna be a good one. That's how you like to start a day of fishing. You know what? If this is a walleye, it's a big one. <laughs> well, we'll just have to see what we have, or it's, or it's at least a real good one. But I got a feeling it might be something different. I don't know though. It's, you know, it's not not bobbing around. We're we're sitting out. Oh, there he went, and he broke it off. That was a pike. I... There he is. Boy, this guy. I worked him a long time. They're just not, they're not on fire this, this afternoon. And, and I'll tell you what I think it is, is you can see these high skies have come in. And this is definitely a cold front. Oh yeah, look at him though. He's a good one. Look at that fish. It's exactly how you want to start. He got me tangled up in that other bobber rod too. But boy, I'll tell you what, that's exactly how you want to get going here. Just put a fish like that in right away. Well, I like that. He's exactly what we came here to catch. He should be just under that 17 inch mark. Yep, that'll be a perfect fish to go home and eat. You know, walleyes like that one though, there's a ton of bait in here. So they're running around and they're looking at all these different options and, and there's a lot of options for them. And on the screen today, this graph is just constantly lit up with bait and it almost gets hard to tell sometimes if it's a fish coming up, you really gotta look for that thick red line and when you see that, it's fish. But what I'm using is the Lindy 360 jig. And what this does is that thing rotates every single time I lift it and then when I drop it back down, it lays back down on its side and it rotates as it's going down and looks like a dying bait fish. So it's doing two things. One, it's giving off flash. Every time I jig this thing, it gives off flash, but it also gives off vibration. And when you've got all this bait down here, you need something to set yourself apart. So we're tipping this with a minnow head. We're making that noise. We're making that vibration, that flash. And when that walleye came in, he's choosing between millions of shiner minnows and perch minnows down there right now. But this thing caught his attention and it could have been from any of those reasons. I don't know if it was the flash, the vibration, the little bit of extra noise, but it did something. It got his attention and he came racing in here and smacked it. Lindy 360 jig, it's one of those things that you like to drop down, especially in a situation like this where there's a lot of competition down there because it's different. There he is. Take it, take it, take it. Got him. Got that guy to come up quite a ways. I don't think he's real big though. No, he don't. He's not exactly what we're hunting for, but you know what? He's a good sign. We're turning on more and more and more right now. Good fun little guy to catch. He'll be a keeper in a couple years. Get out of here, buddy. Here he goes. Bobber's going. I watched this fish come up. <laughs> you know, I, all of a sudden, I knew something was happening. I watched a fish come up off the bottom, and I thought, sure, he was coming for the 360. Must have swam right by it, and I'm running this dead stick next to it. And I, I like to run a dead stick all the time next to a jigging presentation because of this right here. For some reason, whatever we got hooked up was not interested in that 360. It probably brought him in, probably got him excited, but he saw that shiner minnow hanging there and ran up and grabbed that. I would speculate that what we got is a pike here, but you know, you'll find if it is a pike that you, you get these pike mixed in along with these walleyes, and you know, they're fun to catch. I don't care what anybody says. You got a rod bending like that and a fish going the other direction, and that's a lot of fun. Let's see here, I think I'm, I think I'm getting him close. We'll have to see. You know, we're out here fishing today, out on some humps, and these are, these are mid-lake humps out here on Winnie, and, and what's happening out here right now is these fish are scattered out all over these things, but I picked, I picked one of the little ones and I'll tell you why I did. There's, there's roads finally starting to show up out here. The slush conditions are 
have kind of cleaned themselves up a little bit and roads are starting to show up and they're going to the biggest humps first. And that's because they can get the most people out there. So what I've done is we snowmobiled out here. Oh, look at that. That, holy smokes. I gotta see if I can even get this guy moving because I want to show him to you. This is a huge eel pot. Let's see if I can get him coming up the hole. Let's see. Oh yeah, there we go. That's a big pout. Holy smokes. Look at him. Look at that thing. That is a big fat eel pout. You know, they cruise out here along with the along with the walleyes and the pike. We'll let that guy go. Look at the size of that fish. That's fun to catch. I don't care what anybody says. We'll let him go. But but hey, out here where where we're fishing today. You can get here now. And what's going on is all of these small humps haven't been touched yet because of those slush conditions earlier this year. So if you get out here right now, you know, here in the next couple of weeks, you can pick spots that have been untouched all year and there's fish all over them. I mean, you're gonna get pike out here. You're gonna get eel pout. You're gonna get walleyes. You're gonna get perch. They're just all stacked up. But look for those ones that are coming out of deep water that are smaller and usually there will be four or five six of them together there's literally hundreds of them out here and when you find them what's really cool is if there's not fish on this one just jump over to the next one and just keep moving until you make contact with fish one other thing that i'm really keyed in on is my graph is just loaded with bait and what that is is it's all skinnier little uh lighter lines down toward the bottom and it'll come up about three feet and if you find a bunch of bait like that you're going to find fish all over it and it's going to be all different species Oh yeah. That a good little leader. Boy, this guy. I've worked a long time and you know what? I'll tell you what's happening here. We have a cold front just bearing down on us here this afternoon. And you can just tell, I mean, the snow's blowing around out there. I mean, it's downright cold. And I've had, I mean, I've had to crank this heater all the way up to high just to stay warm. And I'll tell you, I haven't seen many fish for the last hour. But what I did there is I just started banging bottom and working this 360 a lot less aggressively. What I started doing is actually just lifting it and jiggling it. And what's really neat about this jig is you don't need to always make it spin because it'll fish like a spoon too. So you can actually just jiggle it like I was doing. And that's what fooled this guy. Now, hey, you know what? I'm gonna throw this guy in the bucket. We're gonna go in and have some dinner tonight. And with that, we're gonna close our fish head season for the ice season. And we're gonna be back right away next spring as soon as we have some open water and some warmer weather. So stay tuned, check back with us then, and we'll take you to some of the hottest bites across the Midwest again next summer.